The good Mark Kuda is about to undergo a teardown that will resemble an automotive autopsy. Before it gets media blasted, the nearly 40-year history of this road warrior will be exposed. If it's been thumped, bumped, or rolled, no amount of past bodywork will keep any secrets hidden. Getting a car down to its basic components is essential for a good media blast. The more that comes off, the better the blast. How are you? How you doing, Dan? Good. So where are we at with this? Well, we're getting ready to do door bracing. We're going to stiffen up the body before it goes on the auto twirler. Okay. Um, we put bracing in the doors when the car goes on a twirler to keep it from uh, flexing, to keep it shape. Uh, usually we only need to put 16th inch square tube, either 3 quarter or 1 inch in square, and do an X brace in the door and a cross side brace to make sure that everything stays where we want it while we're working on the car structurally. There's no such thing as too much bracing. Without a full chassis underneath to keep it straight and stiff, the bracing becomes more and more critical as things come off the shell. And many things will come off before we're done. Muzzle tough. <laughs> a rotted trunk floor is the first to go, but rather than ripping it all out and starting fresh, Paul wants it to go in sections, taking off only the sheet metal and leaving factory supports in place. It complicates the job, but improves your cutting skills. Baby. <laughs> Next, getting the CUDA off its body cart and onto a rotisserie will improve access to some of the hard to reach places. Uh, you've got a 3,000 pound weight capacity designed to fit any body style, full frame, unibody, you name it. Uh, with that, you've got full length and height adjustability, easy enough for one guy to pull, mount, and balance a body by himself. Turning the car upside down eliminates the need to use a torch or plasma cutter lying on your back. What you get with any rotisserie that sits on a tripod design like ours, you have to have your last point of contact within the caster on the center bar. If you go outside of that, it actually puts torque on the swing arm and allows it to cock out. Um, that will cause binding in the rotation. So what we've done is draw the center bar, kind of try to pull things in, tighten it up so everything sits straight, rotates well. We were adjusting the pivot points so they're all equal. Um, unlike other rotisseries that we work with, this rotisserie is more exact. So getting the pivot points accurate so it makes it easy to turn is very important. Getting the rotisserie ends closer to the car is the objective here. It reduces the chance that the body will droop and take stress off the bracing. With the brackets the guys had put on this thing to allow room to work, um, the length puts the body out beyond the cash on the center bar. So what we did was actually redrill some holes in the mounting post on the auto twirler draw the car in closer to the tripod to allow it to straighten up, allow for easier rotation. How easy is this? Getting this kind of access to the underside is definitely worth the extra time to mount the car properly. The trunk, well, um, the car is going to be uh, heading over to, for media blasting, and so we had to remove as much of the trunk panel as possible so they could get inside there and blast away, removing all the rust and scale. So we focused on removing the actual trunk pan and uh, around the gas tank braces as much as possible. We had to leave the braces in to keep the structural integrity of the car, so we cut around them and uh, removed as much of the rusty panel as possible. These panels are a no-brainer for making them cast-offs, but some riskier plans are in the works too. Cutting into a major cross-brace support is part of the strategy to reroute the exhaust system. Only a portion needs to be cut away, so a more experienced hand takes on that job. Dan worked in the trunk, laying out the cut lines for uh, cutting along the ribs and the reinforcement braces underneath the pan. So now we've opened all those areas up to allow access to getting up into the channels and peeling off residual metal so that we can get in with media. I like this. This is a drain plug that sat this way, except it didn't sit this way when they built the car. It was like this, so it wasn't draining. I wonder what that caused. Mopar is legendary for innovative designs that challenge the competition. Sometimes the execution of those ideas fell short of their lofty goals, but time and testing has shown where most flaws are. Expert builders know how to improve and overcome what was missed back in the day. Uh, the quarter panels, uh, again, because the car is going to be blasted, uh, we had to get as much of the metal out of the way that's not going to be used uh, to be able to get inside and remove all the rust and scale, like we mentioned. So you take off a portion of the quarter, you take the side of it off, you want to keep the top and the bottom in place, attached to the wheelhouse, and uh, the, the trunk floor drop off, you don't want to lose the structural integrity of the car. Uh, one side was better than the other. 
Uh, the passenger side, uh, an accident had occurred on the car before, so there was a lot of Bondo in there, uh, some overlapping of metal, so it took a little extra work to get that off. But uh, overall, we're pretty pleased with the results, though. The diet for Goodmark 70 Cuda is just begun.